Hi and welcome back to Sunsummit. In this video, what we'll talk about is going to be the pituitary gland in our journey through the endocrine system. What we'll discuss is what it does, its anatomy, physiology, and the portal circulation, the hormones the pituitary gland produces and their effects in the body. The pituitary gland is the master gland of the body. And this is because of its various functions regulating metabolic processes around the body. It produces many hormones that are important for nearly every aspect of homeostasis. And so this is why we call it the master gland. But like everyone and everything, it too has a boss. It requires releasing factors from the hypothalamus to carry out all of these functions. And this we'll see soon. But let's talk about its anatomy first. Now the pituitary gland is located in the sphenoid bone in a hypophysial fossa, the cella turcica that is, and is covered by the cellar diaphragm. It consists of two compartments, one posterior compartment and one anterior compartment. Now the posterior compartment in turn consists of a pars nervosa, pars meaning part, nervosa meaning neuronal. So this is a collection of neuronal endings that we'll see uh, soon. And it also consists of an infundibulum or an uh, infundibular stalk which we see here. On the other hand, the anterior pituitary gland consists of three parts. One, pars distalis, which is the main part of the anterior pituitary gland. Pars intermedia, which is a portion that separates the posterior and anterior compartment. And pars tuberalis, which surrounds the infundibular stalk. And if we localize ourselves here, it is below the hypothalamus. So this would be the hypothalamus. And here you would have the optic chiasm. Now, another important structure at the infundibulum here is going to be the median eminence. And this we'll see is going to have an importance in the hypophysial portal pituitary tract, which essentially is a tract that carries the releasing hormones towards the anterior pituitary gland through a portal system. It produces eight hormones, six in the anterior compartment, and two in the posterior compartment. Now it is supplied by two arteries. One is the superior hypophysial artery. The superior hypophysial artery is a branch of the cervical portion of the internal carotid artery. And it's gonna supply the pars tuberalis, which is this part here. It's also gonna supply the infundibulum as well as the median eminence. So it's gonna be important in the first portion of the portal circulation. Another artery is gonna be the inferior hypophysial artery, which is a branch of the internal carotid artery, the cavernous portion. And this is gonna act to supply the neurohypophysis. So let's talk about hypothalamic control. Now in the hypothalamus, you have magnocellular secreting cells and you have paraprocellular secreting cells. Magno meaning large and parvo meaning small. Now what these magnocellular cells are gonna do is that they're gonna produce two hormones. These hormones will be the oxytocin and ADH. And through a tract known as the hypothalamohypophysial tract, they will directly release these hormones to the posterior lobe. This is in contrast to the anterior pituitary gland, where you would need a portal circulation to carry out these functions. Now, why this difference? Well, the posterior lobe is actually an extension of the hypothalamus. So there is an embryological difference here, where the posterior lobe comes off the neuroectoderm the anterior lobe comes off the oral ectoderm in a structure known as raticus pouch. So that's why you will need the portal circulation for the anterior lobe, but a direct connection to the posterior lobe. Now here in the post gland, what we'll see is that the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei will have axonal endings here in the paras nervosa, which uh, these axonal endings are also known as herring bodies. And this vessel that you see here will be the inferior hypophysial artery, which was a branch of the internal carotid artery, the cavernous portion. The two hormones that will be released from here will be vasopressin, also known as ADH, and this will have an important function in the water reabsorption in the collecting tubules of the kidneys. The other hormone will be oxytocin. This is important for uterine contraction, so to facilitate labor, but also it's important in mammary gland contraction, so to facilitate lactation. On the other hand, what we'll see here is the portal system. Now the portal system simply consists of one artery here that goes to the median eminence, 
This artery will be the superior hypophyseal artery, which comes off the cervical portion of the internal carotid. So here you will have your first portal vein, which will carry the releasing factors from the hypothalamus and release them to the anterior pituitary gland. To be specific, the parastistalis. This, you remember, was the important part. The other portion was the pars intermedia, which was the portion between the posterior and anterior pituitary gland, and pars tuberalis, which was the portion that surrounded the infundibular stalk. Now, in the anterior pituitary gland, you will have different types of cells. You will have chromophobes, so-called because they uh, resist color change, they're afraid, chromophobe, chromo meaning color, phobe meaning afraid, and you will have your basophils and your acidophils. Now, these are acidophils because during hematoxylin, eosin stain, HNE stain, these are rich in nucleic acids, and they also have very strong lysosomal actions, so they will stain blue when stained with hematoxylin, and these will stain red because they're rich in granules that contain a lot of proteins, and so when stained with eosin, in the hematoxylin eosin stain, they will stain pink or red. So these are known as chromophobes, these are known as basophils, and these are known as acidophils. Acetophils because they like acid, basophils because they like base. So what are these acetophils then? Acetophils are going to consist of two population of cells. One is going to be the somatotrophs. Now somatotrophs will produce growth hormones. The other is going to be lactotrophs and they will produce prolactin. We'll see what these hormones do a little bit later on. But in simple terms, prolactin is important for milk synthesis and growth hormone is important for many metabolic processes around the body. And so it's important for growth. The other group of cells that we'll see here was the basophils. Now this contains a population of three different cells. This would be your tyrotrophs, which will produce TSH, which is the thyroid stimulating hormone. And this will go to the thyroid gland to produce T3 and T4. These T3 and T4 hormones are important for the regulation of the basic metabolic rate. The other group of cells that are found within the basophils, these cells here, are going to be the gonadotrophs. Now these will produce follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, and luteinizing hormone. FSH in females will lead to follicular growth in the ovaries, and in males it will lead to spermatogenesis. And LH will lead to ovulation in females and in males, it will lead to testosterone production. Testosterone, as you remember, was the male sex hormone. The third group of cells that, are, that can be found here in the basophil category will be the corticotrophs. Now, these corticotrophs will produce a hormone known as ACTH, or adrenocorticotropic hormone. Now, this hormone will go to the adrenal cortex, and it will produce glucocorticoids, most importantly, cortisol. Now, cortisol, as you remember, had anti-inflammatory properties. So let's talk about the hypothalamic releasing factors then. So these are the factors that are released from the hypothalamus that will stimulate or inhibit, as we'll see soon, these basophils and acidophils. The first one on the list is going to be the growth hormone releasing hormone. Now this hormone is going to be released from the arcuate nucleus. Now if you don't know these nuclei, you should watch the video on the hypothalamus where we talk about this nuclei in detail. So the first hormone here is going to be the growth hormone releasing hormone. This is going to be produced in the arcuate nuclei and it's going to go through the portal circulation and it's going to go to the somatotrophs, which was a population of the acidophils and it will produce growth hormone. The second type of cell that we'll see here is going to be somatostatin. Now somatostatin will be produced by the paraventricular nuclei and it will act to inhibit growth hormone release and tyrotropin releasing hormone, so TRH. Now the growth hormone releasing hormone would have released growth hormone and the tyrotropin releasing hormone would have released TSH. Dopamine is released from the arcuate and this is also known as prolactin inhibiting factor or prolactin inhibiting hormone. Simply what it does is that it goes to these lactotrophs, which are a subpopulation of the acidophils, and it would inhibit the release of prolactin. The other hormone here is the tyrotropin releasing hormone or TRH. This one is released from the paraventricular nuclei and it too has dual function. One is that it will go to the lactotrophs and it will say, all right, start to produce prolactin. So we can actually call this 
prolactin releasing factor or prolactin releasing hormone. Another thing it will do is that it will, will go to the tyrotrophs, as the name suggests, tyrotropin releasing hormone will go to the tyrotrophs, which was the subpopulation of the basophils to produce TSH. The gonadotropin releasing hormone is produced in the sexual diamorphic nuclei, which is located in the medial preoptic nuclei in the preoptic region of the hypothalamus. Now this will go to the gonadotrophs, which is the subpopulation of the, the basophils, and it will stimulate the production of FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, and LH, luteinizing hormone. The last here on the list would be the corticotropin releasing hormone, CRH, and this one will go to the corticotrophs, which was a subpopulation of the basophils, which we see here, and it will stimulate the production of ACTH or adrenocorticotropic hormone. And here we see these cells again at a zoom of 612 under a mason stain. This would be our acetophils. These would be our basophils. And these small cells would be our chromophobes. Under the acetophil population, we had two groups, which was the, yes, lactotrophs and somatotrophs. The lactotrophs produced prolactin and the somatotrophs produced growth hormone. Under the basophil category, we had three types of cells. We had the tyrotrophs, which produced TSH. We had the gonadotrophs, which produced FSH and LH. And we had the corticotrophs, which produced ACTH. Now, chromophobes are essentially reserve cells. And this colored here are secretion products. 